some business okay. and, and I like to do this uh, many times. Proud to you becoming National Communications Officer. Did you um, um, ever hold any official party position? Yes. Yes, I started as a um, public relations officer of Tain K University. Okay. And then I later became the president of Tain K University okay. during my uh, first degree university days. And um, after that, I played a couple of roles for the party um, as a member of the regional communications team of the party, both in the Bonahafo region and the Ashanti regions, mm -hmm. um, speaking for the then mayor of Kumase. Mm -hmm. Uh, was also appointed as an assembly member at the Kumasi Metropolitan Assembly. So uh, during that period, I got that exposure uh, relative to the rudiments of our local government mm. systems and so on. And um, later on, played other roles for the party at the national level. So, okay. all right. So, so you you won an election. You're the national communications officer. What are the issues that have confronted you? Oh. Since you assumed office, wow. I mean, this is a very, very big position. Yeah. Yes, it is. Yes. yes, for a party, a very big party. Like the NDC. Mm. Uh, Randy, you know, admittedly, the responsibility which has been entrusted to some of us is a very daunting one. Expectations are very high, and that is because, as a party, we believe that we need a paradigm shift in our communications approach and strategies. We also believe that communication will be integral and critical <coughs> to our quest at winning the 2020 elections. And so the expectations are very high, number one. And the delegates of our party, the rank and file of our party, are looking at us to transform our communications department into an effective, robust communications department which would position us as a better and credible alternative to this impotent, inept, nepotistic Akufuwa Lubaunia government. Mm -hmm. So that is what we are working at. It's basically about putting measures in place to harmonize our communications activities, ensure coordination, work on our messaging, work on improving the consistency and the uniformity of our communications and so on. And so far, so good. Um, other senior comrades in our party uh, supporting us and uh, we uh, collaborating with the minority caucus and other uh, officials of the party to put measures in place. That is what we've been at so far and mm. uh, I am optimistic that um, next year you will see a lot from the communications directorate of the party. Okay, yeah. well, one of the things that I've heard uh, uh, people in your party complain about or speak about has to do with your representation on um, programs. Programs, and um, I see two issues. One has to do with the 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 caliber and competence of those who represent you, and two, um, your your influence in the choice. When I say, I don't mean you, yeah. I mean your party's influence. In the choice of who represents you. Uh, is this something that has come to your attention? Yes, something which has strongly come up. Um, uh, that has to do with our panel placement system mm -hmm. and how we deploy communicators mm -hmm. to various political talk shows to represent the party. Uh, currently, the situation or the current situation is not the best because the party doesn't have control over that system. And so, uh, if you ask me who is, will be representing the party, say, on PCFM today, I may not know. On, say, on uh, TV3, I may not know, because currently the party is not in charge of that. And that is what we are working at currently. Our, plans, our plan is that effective 1st January, the party will take absolute control. Not absolute control, but will take control of that because there still has to be some collaboration between the party and the media stations mm -hmm. with regards to that. Mm -hmm. And that is key. So yes, people are going out there to represent the party, but we are also mindful uh, of the so fact you that wanna, you want to sit with these um, stations, stations yes. and have an interaction yeah, So what, what we want to do is that 
uh, only last week we reconstituted the national communications team. We so had our inaugural meeting. We've done that already. Okay. And uh, by next week, we will be submitting a list of names to all the media stations in the country. That will be replicated in the regions as well. So the agreement is that once we discuss that with the various production teams and they agree that these people can appear on these platforms, then on a weekly basis, we will you know, allocate communicators to specific you know, platforms for the media stations to also know ahead of time that these are the people who will be coming from our side to help the way they do the pairing you know, uh, 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 with the other side as well. So that is what we are currently working at, and uh, FEC has taken an interest in the matter. And so it, it, it is a matter which is even beyond me. It is now the party's position that we want to take control of that. And I can, ensure, I can assure the public, especially our rank and file, that come 1st January 2019, we will change this you know, panel. Okay, business. well, don't, don't be too categorical, because um, like I often say also on the show, for example, on this program, we've given you the opportunity to determine who comes. Yeah. But that is also subject to us agreeing because we have a program, we have standards to protect. Yes, and all that. And so. So, so collaboration. Yes, collaboration. yes. So, yes, um, I know that for most, for, for many other programs, you don't have that opportunity. Mm -hmm. And it is the, the programs that decide who should represent yeah. you. So what you're trying to look for is a, a that middle collaboration. Way. They must not have that unilateral, <coughs> you know, uh, say. Mm -hmm. I believe that you cannot on your own, because then this is a corporate body, and it is bad corporate governance to, you know, invite a person not sanctioned by a corporate body to speak for that corporate body. Mm. And so it cannot be a, a, a unilateral decision by the stations. Mm. And so and it, it can't also be our unilateral decision mm. because, because at the end of the day program. the platform is mm. not ours mm. so that is why there is a need for consultations mm. collaborations to ensure that um i mean we we we, we serve all the interests you know in this matter mm. well, what would you make of this thing because you know when we started this show it was the same thing it's basically me bringing my friends and people that i had uh, relations with to, to start a program and to go on and all that and when the program when it got to a point where I thought that things were stable I allowed the producers to do that and then we kept getting complaints even in the middle of a program you have people send you text messages but how can this person represent us mm -hmm. I mean he's too weak is this is that you know and we then decided that look it's only fair that if somebody is representing their interest allow them to have a say, whilst you also try and maintain your standards and uh, uh, have your, 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 your viewers in mind and all that. Now, it looks like there is a certain challenge. There still are programs in this country um, that still operate at a level of, we will decide, it's our program. We need representation from <coughs> party A, party B. Uh, we will decide uh, who comes, who represents these parties. And even if the parties protest that, look, for the issues that you are going to discuss, we think that Mr. A or Mr. B will better represent our interest. They say, no, I mean, this is who we have decided we want to come and represent your interest. I mean, how do you do that? I must say that on this program, there are also certain entrenched positions. For example, Kweku Baku for Thursdays. It can't be changed. Kweku Prat on Wednesday. The female panel on Monday. Monday. Yes. Those are decisions that are non-negotiable. Yeah. We, we, we have done something in terms of representation. I think there is an overkill relative mm -hmm. to party representation. Right. Or in terms of the mindset. Right. That's the political culture. To the extent that even some of the parties, the smaller ones, complain every day that they are not uh, every represented day. on shows like every this. Every day. You know, at the point we had a three-member panel. Yeah. And we yes. always had. Yeah. At the point yes. that we had a three-member panel. Yes. yes. I remember. So that that is itself a problem, but really, uh, it's a reflection also 
of the state of the political mm -hmm. system, mm -hmm. the duality mm -hmm. virtually that we have. So perhaps it might be useful that the smaller parties begin to grow their own influence and scope, you know. But of course, fortunately, we have a multi electronic media system. It's plural, radio, TV, there are many other stations that could give them spaces and things. But uh, it will take a while for the duality to be reduced. Mm -hmm. And I think that I agree with Sami in terms of how to forge ahead. It should be through collaborative efforts. You have your station, you have your philosophy, you know what you want to market out there, but you are interested in the parties too. You want to, their presence. To, to the extent that you say this person is representing me. Mm -hmm. Yes. I should, I, should I have an input into who represents me mm -hmm. or must you, yeah. Yeah. must you take that decision unilaterally? No, you can't do that. You can't do that. Then the, the person who is coming is not representing them at that material moment. Exactly. Why is he on the show? Mm -hmm. he's, he's here to talk for himself. And unfortunately, how many people will be able to decipher, you know, to draw that fine line of extension, mm -hmm. that what he's saying represents his personal opinions or what he's saying represents the party. Mm -hmm. So the collaboration is inevitable and it is unavoidable. Okay. And it makes sense to me mm -hmm. that it ought to be done that mm -hmm. way. You know? mm -hmm. And I'm happy the Monday things too that you did. Mm -hmm. You know, again, you showed your editorial influence and discretion. Mm -hmm. And it's beautiful. Let me confess to you. I enjoy the Monday show this Thank you. Very, no, I'm trying to take Tuesday away from the parties too. I want to do something different. Be careful they, they don't they, come they, they, they are begging. I'm, I'm trying to have a, a different concept I want to bring up on Tuesdays. Mm -hmm. but, uh, Maybe after 2020. <laughs> <laughs> you see, you've you got this focus somewhere. <laughs> I, that we that. I mean, we, we think already they have, they had only four each mm -hmm. yeah because thursday wednesday you and we mm -hmm. is mm -hmm. taken mm -hmm. from them mm -hmm. and then i've taken the mondays mm -hmm. so they have three each mm -hmm. and i want to take tuesday again for oh, them to no. have two each that, but i that. have a certain concept i want to do on yeah. tuesday I, I like the monday well, we'll team up with our mpp brothers too yeah. to I, I like the, <laughs> ma the monday team right at so far yeah, uh, yeah. They, they've been regular but yes. occasionally yes. I realize, yes. but yes. i like it it's, it's yes. beautiful and then you see that not much tension no mod some liberal moderate oh. approach it makes you listen uh, you know when there's cacophony uh, yeah. you can't hear anybody uh -huh. so the ladies are doing very well oh. to be honest with you and there's also one critique which generally has been going that why most of us are not professionals sometimes oh. like the budget day they would need experts to come and deal with it then you bring people like us here the politicals as well as the non-political but not competent i'm not competent in those areas and then you bring us here we end up doing the same yeah. you know well my answer yeah. to that yeah is that if i were to use metro tv just metro mm -hmm. tv in terms of the structure of the programs good evening ghana Fantastic. is structured in a way to deal with things like i agree that. with you mm -hmm. yes good morning ghana is structured differently yes otherwise when the budget is presented Parliament must not even debate. Yes. We must take it to... I, I was going there. Uh -huh. I was going there. I was saying that there are, if you watch, you do a content analysis mm -hmm. of all the stations, they have even got programs yeah. that are specific, yeah. you know, that relate either to law, either to right. economics, to financial. Health, sports. So, yes, this newspaper segment, mm -hmm. review, people should allow mm -hmm. so that we can come yeah, also make I agree. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's the point I'm making. Mm -hmm. Anyway. I see that uh, one of the first things mm -hmm. that you decide to do is what you call a uh, moment of truth. Moment of truth. Mm -hmm. um, and just when you, you announced it, I mean, after a few days, mm. uh, we saw something else. No, within and so 24 hours. Within 24 hours. Yes. So you had your first one when yesterday. Yesterday. And then a few hours after you. Yes. After yours, yes. then we had one address Truth by... Truth Forum. Yes, one yeah, address by the, 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 the... What's the moment of truth about and why do you decide to... Is it one of the strategies that the new communications team is coming up with? Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. uh, Randy, the moment of truth series is um, an initiative which will mainly focus on assessing the performance of the Kufu Adol. <coughs> so, like the name suggests, moment of truth. We 
would through this initiative subject the representations that government make on various issues mm -hmm. to strict proof mm -hmm. and assess the veracity of the claims government officials make to us as citizens. And so we know that at the end of the day, we will succeed in exposing the deceptions of this government and, as, uh, and in exposing the abysmal performance of this government because that is what we have witnessed under them uh, over the past 22 months or so that they have been in office. The, the, the reality or the fact is that this MPP government ruled on the back of many lofty utopian mouth-watering promises to power. Today, evidence abounds that they are not delivering on all their flagship promises to the people of this country on the basis of which they were elected. And we in the NDC believe that the promises that we make to the electorate during elections must mean something to us. When we are elected on the basis of these promises, a social contract is forged between the electorate and government. And it then behoves on government to implement these promises in the interest of the people who voted them into office. Mm. And so yesterday, for example, the maiden edition was occasioned by the MPPs claim that they are delivering on many of their promises. Uh, clearly, Randy, that cannot be the case. That claim is not supported by the facts on the ground. That right. claim is palpable falsehood. And that is why we took the pain to take you know, the people of this country and the media through the many failed promises of this administration mm -hmm. uh, for us to know that this government is performing abysmal. And that is why we are reeling under the excruciating economic conditions that we currently find ourselves in. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if I can zoom into Please the do. main issues. Please do. You see, government or the MPP, while in opposition, promised us that if elected, they were going to transform Ghana within 18 months. Randy, I'm very sure that you remember that promise by then opposition leader Nanado Dankwa Akufuado. I have the video. Yes. Mm -hmm. Now, not too long ago, we heard him admit that Ghanaians are going through hardship. The president himself admitted that. And if you look at paragraph 10 of the 2019 budget statement presented to the August House of Parliament, the finance minister also concedes that Ghanaians are going through a lot of hardship. And so that, for me, is an admission of failure. It is an admission of the fact that government has not delivered the transformation and the comfort they promised the people of this country. Because if they had delivered that transformation in 18 months, they would not be telling us in 22 months, after 22 months, that, hey, we know you are going through hardship. It means that they haven't achieved that transformation yet. And that, for me, is fundamental. Mm -hmm. Let me also indicate that we in the NDZ are not saying that the MPP, or government, must implement all their promises within the 22, you know, should have implemented all their promises within the 22 months that they have been in office. We are holding them to the very standards they set for themselves. And the standard was simple. We will transform Ghana within 18 months. If you look at many of their flagship promises, they gave us the timelines themselves. For example, the president promised that he was going to deliver 51 factories by the end of his first year, 2017. Or at least we will see 51 factories springing up in this country. Today, Randy, the question is, where are the factories? Where are the factories? Instead of building these factories in consonance with their promises to the people of this country, they are going around commissioning and recommissioning existing private businesses and appropriating these existing businesses as part of the One District, One Factory initiative, which is a clear, you know, uh, uh, if you like, um, um, which de clearly defeats the position they took was in opposition because this one district, one factory initiative was supposed to create jobs. These existing factories already have a workforce. And so if you go around commissioning these factories, what you are doing is that, in effect, you are not adding any you know, 
jobs. You are not creating any jobs because these factories have existed. Some of them have existed for the past seven years, eight years, ten years. Look at the list of 79 uh, factories which they released uh, last week. You see the Booz and North Company in Kumasi, a company which has been in the business oh, the for list more than is 10 years. Out. Yes, the 79 factories. The um, coordinator has been speaking to the media and she mentions factories like Everpure, Kina Pharma, B5. Now, during the Greater Accra Regional Tour of the President only last week, he went to Botiano English Amount Room to commission another one there, uh, which is a Sunda Ghana Limited factory, specifically called GH Pro, and they uh, are into the production of diapers. That is a factory which has been in existence for the past seven years. You see, so that in itself shows that government has failed on that promise of one district, one factory. You look at the one village, one dam promise. Today we are not seeing dams. We are seeing a redefinition of dams by the MPP, where dugouts and excavated ponds are being represented as dams, when we know that these are not dams. And even with that, how many can you count? You can, they can only show us a handful of these dugouts and excavated ponds. But we were not, in fact, nobody held a gun to the head of Dr. Bawumia to tell us that for 2018 alone, they were going to deliver 560 dams. And so it is justifiable for us to hold them to account and say, where are the 560 dams you promised for 2018 alone? And there again, the $1 million per constituency promise is another promise. These were their main you know, flagship promises. By now, Randy, every constituency in this country should have received $2 million from government. But we know that that is not the case. In fact, government is even strangulating the District Assembly Commons Fund. And that is affecting development in our local areas, the municipalities and all that. Everything is at a standstill because government has failed to deliver on that promise. The bureaucratic institutions that it has put in place, you know, are rather diverting these monies for needless expenditures and ventures, which clearly are not in the interest of the ordinary citizen. And then you remember their famous promise to pay all contractors within their first 100 days. Now, when I meet my brothers from the MPP, the question I ask them is that, have you paid the contractors? Because for the first time, Randy, in the history of Ghana, we are hearing get fund contractors threatening demonstrations. I have never heard that before. We are hearing get fund contractors threatening school closures, the closure of the schools they built because government is refusing to pay them. And what saddens me in all this is that that is having a debilitating effect on the banking sector and the financial sector as a whole. That is why non-performing loans are going up and the banks are suffering. And so today, the government which promised to provide a congenial atmosphere for the growth of the financial sector is strangulating that sector. When they took office, the financial and insurance sector had recorded a growth rate of 22.3% for the last quarter of 2016 alone. Randy, 22.3%. That is what they came to meet. Today, as we speak, that sector has contracted for the past 24 months such that the growth rate for the financial sector is negative 13.1%. The financial sector is growing in the negatives. And the economic messiah the economic wizard, the economic whiz, whiz of the MPP, Dr. Bawumia, is not perturbed about this. He would rather concern himself with technological interventions like drone technology and um, uh, Ghana Post GPS, which have all turned out to be misplaced priorities. Then they are promised to our cocoa farmers that they are going to <coughs> support the cocoa sector, <coughs> support their businesses and all that. When all they have done in the past 20, 22 months is the very opposite of that. You come into office, you see, you come and meet many, over 200 cocoa road projects commenced by the previous government. You have abandoned all those projects such that these roads have deteriorated, causing the nation a lot of financial losses. You promise to support cocoa farmers, but you turn around to sell not for sale fertilizers to cocoa farmers at 80 Ghana cities, not for sale fertilizers to them. The, fat, the farmers could not afford these fertilizers. And Randy, you know that on the 20th of November 2018, these fertilizers got expired. Two weeks before they got expired, this government called the farmers again that come for the, for the fertilizer, this time around, for free. 
And so this is a clear case, a classical case, what the lawyers will call locus classicus, of willfully causing financial loss. So they say that is why cocoa production has seen a decline from the 960,400 metric tons that we left behind to 900,000 metric tons, which is equivalent to a 7.2% decline in our national cocoa output. So there are promises to cocoa farmers and to the cocoa sector, again, have not been met. And then you look at their promises to drivers. Before the 2016 election, you saw drivers <coughs> in the city of Accra with Nana Adodanko Kufuado's posters on their cars. Drivers will change. Today, they are all gnashing their teeth in regret because they are saying that the president has deceived them. He promised them lower, uh, lower prices for fuel. Today, what is the cost of petrol? What is the cost of diesel? A gallon of petrol, which was going at the time, uh, 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 for 14 Ghana cities is today being sold at 23 Ghana cities. And that is partly as a result of government's mismanagement of the economy because you know the um, exchange rate factor in the calculation of fuel prices and so on. If the exchange rate had been stable, the prices of fuel would have been stable or at least would have come down. And then the big one, the exchange rate, which the MPP made a lot of noise about in the run-up to the 2016 election. Do you remember the economic lectures organized by Dr. Bahumia? The last one he did was titled Ghana's Economy, a Foundation of Straw or Concrete. I don't know if you remember that. Randy, in that statement, Dr. Bahumia told us that the main yastic or the main barometer for assessing the strength of the fundamentals of every economy is determined by the strength of the exchange rate of that country. Today, what is the state of our exchange rates? Said a lot of things about that. In fact, when they came into office, after their first 100 days, Dr. Bohumia organized a press conference, told us that he had arrested the dollar and had handed over the keys to the IGP. Today, you need five CDs or more to get a dollar. At the time they came in, you needed 4.2 Ghana cities. Now you need more than five Ghana cities. Same for the euro. Used to, the, uh, 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 when they came in, you needed four Ghana cities, 40 pesos for one euro. Now you need five cities, 40 pesos. You need six cities, 30 pesos for a pound. At the time they came in, you needed only five cities, 20 pesos. Check the SIFA. All our sisters and the traders who go to the French countries to import things are now suffering. Because they have seen a continuous erosion of their capital and profit margins. Because our city is even struggling against the SIFA. The SIFA, Randy. And then, they are all the noise they made about our uh, ballooning public debt and how the money was in Ghana, how we had a lot of resources, that there wasn't a, the need for us to borrow. In only 22 months, and even before I say that, Randy, you know that from the days of Osage for Dr. Kwame Nkrumah till 2016, when we were leaving office, the total public debt of Ghana stood at 120 billion Ghana cities. Yesterday I heard the MPP say 122, it is 120 billion because the controller and accountant general uh, and the auditor general have corrected that figure, that it was 120 billion we left for them. In only 22 months, they have accumulated debt of 50 billion Ghana cities with very little to show on the ground. We constructed the rich hospitals, the Ghana Maritime Authority hospitals, the um, Circle Dubai Interchange, Terminal 3, the airport projects we did, the road projects we did, the many educational facilities we built, and so on. Today, you ask the MPP, show us what you have done with the 50 billion, and they cannot pinpoint to you any physical <coughs> capital projects they have used these monies for. When we were leaving office, the percentage of uh, capital expenditure to GDP was 4.5%, and they made a lot of noise about that. They said 4.5% was too low. Today, the percentage of capital projects to GDP is around 2.5%, about half what we left for them, when they have actually had more resources in terms of the loans they have contracted, and even in terms of the all year revenue that they have gotten as a government. And then they are promised not to run a family and friends government, which we raised yesterday. On, the, on Saturday, the 17th of January 2016, in Kumase, specifically at the MPP's delegate conference. Then opposition leader Nana Dodanko Ekufu had promised that he was not going to operate a family and friends government. Randy, today we have seen him practice
family and friends, nepotism and chronism in a way that Ghana has never seen. This government is the most nepotistic in the history of Ghana. And I dare say in the history of the world. You've seen the president giving appointments to his daughter, you know, cousins, uh, former wives, I don't know how to describe them, brothers and so on. Maybe not former wives. Uh, mm. Oh, it's former girlfriends. Not former wives. It's not not former, former wives. girlfriends. Uh, Virginia Hesse is the one I'm referring to, the ambassador for Czech Republic. Yeah. You know, friends and so on. And that, that is what we will actually be uh, uh, dwelling on when we have the second edition of our Moment of Truth series. What? Because we will... Family, you mean family the family and friends? And friends the okay. unprecedented levels of nepotism in this government okay. must be exposed for the people of this country to know. Okay. You see, and they promised. Randy, right? remember, who will protect the public purse? Who will protect the public purse? Who will nip the culture of corruption in the bad? Fight against corruption. Today we are seeing the very opposite of that. Because today they, we are seeing the wanton dissipation and abuse of the public purse. How can government justify the 10 million, uh, million Ghana cities it spent on that dubious fraudulent Ghana post GPS app, which was totally needless, Randy, because the system was already available to Ghanaians and could be assessed by all Ghanaians at no cost to the state. And yet, we paid 10 million Ghana cities for that app, which has now been rendered redundant. Nobody is using that app in this country. How many people? If right now, if you ask you know, your production team members here, to give us their digital addresses for their homes. They will not have it. Because the reality is that it is, it is excuse my language, a useless system. And yet we have spent 10 million of the taxpayers' money on such an expenditure. We appointed an obese government. Remember when he was in opposition, the famous state, says, Professor Mills promised you a lean government. But now he's giving you a lean kinky. I'm sure we all remember that. Today, has the president delivered a lean government? He, rather, he has delivered the most obese and the most bloated government that we have ever seen in the history of Ghana. 111 ministers. So the Ghana has become an object of international ridicule. You travel around, you meet your friends, and they tell you, hey, uh, it's your president who has appointed 111 ministers. Around the and when, they have nothing to show for that. Pl employing thousands of people at the Office of Government Machinery, during our four years in office, the total allocations, if you aggregate all the allocations that we uh, gave the Office of Government Machinery, it comes to a total of just about 1.8 billion. That is between 2012 to 2016. Total <coughs> allocations to the Office of Government Machinery. But Randy, do you know that in 2018 alone, this government allocated a whopping 1.9 billion for the Office of Government Machinery. So their allocation for that agency alone, for, uh, for 2018 alone, is more than what we allocated during the four years that we were in office under the Mahama administration. So clearly, the MPP are not delivering on their promises to the people of Ghana. And having realized that they are losing favor with the masses, they have resorted to lies to save their fast-sinking image and to create a false impression that they'd be busy working when the evidence, I mean, is, the, is to the contrary. And that is why, as a responsible opposition, as citizens and not spectators, we have decided not to sit aloof. But we will come out with the facts and keep government on its toes that, hey, enough of the talk, enough of the sweet rhetoric. Set up, implement your promises, deal with the mess you have created, and improve the livelihoods of the suffering masses in this country. Mm -hmm. Randy, thank you for the opportunity. Well, <coughs> yeah. um, I know that you've prepared your responses to this, but... Um, no, it's... It, it, it. Okay, it looks like per strategy, the NPP, upon hearing of this, also decided to um, uh, also hold something they call the, the Truth Forum. Truth Forum. So hours after this, they also held one address by... And Randy, we, we welcome that <coughs> because, you see, we, wanna, we want to engage in that intellectual issue-based okay. campaign right. going into 2020. We welcome okay. that. But I doubt if they will have the tenacity. Well, time will to, tell. To so, 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 yeah. so they also had yeah. one yeah. addressed by uh, uh, Henry uh, Boachie. Yes. Okay. Yes. Uh, I'm, I'm sure the name I mentioned, a lot of people won't know. 
Henry Boachi. Nanabi. Yeah, Nanabi. <laughs> yeah, it even nearly escaped me. <laughs> but uh, I didn't... And I didn't yes, they did what it says. They maintain that government is improving the lives of Ghanaians, contrary to... And it looks like the strategy from what has happened is that if they hold this in the morning and they give us the moment of truth, they will come up later in the day to give us uh, the truth. Yeah, Randy, it's good mm. for our politics uh, that the two major parties could engage in a very constructive way, you know, on issues of public interest. Of course, we need all the other parties to also articulate their visions, missions, and positions on issues of public interest. So the principle is clear. It's, it's good for us. But I'm not even too sure if this is new. Yeah. Because the NDC had a forum for setting the record straight. The frequent, uh, yes. Uh, and then PP, this thing that uh, you, you just mentioned, it wasn't there to 2016. So it's not new. So it's just a matter of a sign that we are entering into an election mode. 2019, mm -hmm. obviously, uh, the penultimate uh, year, it's a critical year. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I expect these things to happen. Mm -hmm. And it, it's good that we get an opportunity to interrogate those issues one by one. This is a government that I think has been in office at least 23 months. If uh, one, January will be 24 months. The so, two, two weeks to hit 24. Yes, it doesn't, they have four year mandates. Yes. It doesn't mean that you cannot assess the 23 months and have a certain contest for doing that assessment. There's nothing wrong with that in principle. After all, when you make the assessment, the assessment is uh, subject to critique, which is what I think uh, even this program seeks to do. Mm. Uh, there are one or two things. Uh, when I hear NDC communicators, and I think Sami has done the same here, is uh, mentions projects that were undertaken or implemented during their period as part and parcel of the assessment of the 22 months, I find it a bit difficult to appreciate. For instance, if you mention Ghana Maritime uh, Hospital, what's the contest? What are you seeking to do? Mm -hmm in terms of looking at the totality of loans and public debt and things that you're chipping, Ghana Maritime Hospital, which by the records was not built by any government of Ghana law. I don't know if you are aware of that. It was internally generated funds mm -hmm. from that institution. You know, government came up with a certain policy of ensuring that some entities public entities are made to grow their own f capacity. I don't know if you remember that policy. You mean the NDC government? Yes. Mm. It's a government policy that I supported and I still support. Same was done for like Ghana Airports Company. Yes. Where a certain percentage of the uh, uh, IGFs yes. um, were, retained. Uh, were retained. So yes. they, they had a, a difference. In, yes. in the past, you had majority coming to yes. government. So, yeah. so uh, the Ghana Maritime Authority Hospital that project, which was internally generated in terms of the source of funding. I don't see why it is brought within the context of loans contracted by the government. Right. They don't fit in. Right. So you don't even have to mention it. Right. And then two, it began somewhere, I think 2013, and ended, they finished it around 2015, 2016. Mm -hmm. So again, I don't see where you fit it within a 22 month frame if you are doing a comparative analysis. If you want to be fair, you may have to be comparing the 22 months of the Mills administration to the Kufuado administration or the 22 months of the Mahama administration to the Kufuado administration. Then you are be doing a logical and scientific analysis. Otherwise, you just throw things about and it doesn't help anybody. I see it within the realm of propaganda right. instead of serious interrogation of right. the issue. The same with the rich hospital. I don't see why it is brought in at this stage when we are assessing the 22 months of the Akufu administration. That's rich hospital. Go and check the project. In natural fact, the negotiations and everything began 2011. 
under the mills administration. Okay, the loans I think were brand passed August 2012. And then the project was finished somewhere 2015, 2016. See the time frame? Mm -hmm. In terms of negotiations, in terms of procuring the loan, in terms of constructing the project. And you know my position, I backed it. It's a very important project. But then if you are doing a comparative analysis, seeking to show that the government within 22 months had not done enough, I don't think you are entitled to cite projects like Rich Hospital, Ghana Maritime Hospital, Legon, uh, the uh, uh, medical center, as a basis for the comparison. It's, it's, to be honest, it's, it's a fallacy to do so, and it should not be accepted at all. We should look within context. What is it that the Mills or the Mahama administrations, and there are two different administrations, did within their first two, uh, 22 months? as compared to this one, and then we'll proceed further. Now, uh, microeconomic stability, 22 months of the Akufu administration, positive or negative, overall picture, it's positive. But overall picture, it is positive. And you remember I came here and quoted to you, President Mahama, and I'll come to that 18 months thing. President Mohammed's own views on the way we've been handling the economy. I'm sure, Randy, you remember. Yep. If you permit me, I might have to go back to it. But President Mohammed made a statement that what we have had in this country over a period of time is that when a new government takes over, that government is confronted with a situation of microeconomic instability and that the government is then compelled to use almost two years. I'm paraphrasing. I can't find the exact quote, but I've quoted it here before, if you recall, mm -hmm. to deal with the situation before it can even proceed to deal with other issues relative to production and the rest. Relative to that, it's here. If I may quote, every government, for example, has succeeded to various degrees in attaining macroeconomic stability. But as of now, none has been successful in finding a way to sustain it. Indeed, almost every government leaves office with a less than desirable macroeconomic situation. And the government will succeed, and the government that will succeed it then spends the next one to two years bringing the economy back from the brink. It is a vicious cycle that we must break. It is clear that we know how to attain this, but now we must learn how to sustain it. The Dakufuado administration not inherit a situation of macroeconomic instability. It did. That's a fact. That was glaring for everybody to see. 22 months down the line, have they been able to restore some sanity? Yes, they have. Now, my brother, and for that matter, the NDC communicators, then bring up the exchange rate issue. And it's a legitimate issue to bring up. But Randy, when the NPP took over, what was the exchange rate? It was 4.2. It was 4.2. I hear my friends say that it has reached the incredible mark of five, or nearly five. Yes, but if it wasn't four point, if it wasn't at four point two, could it have gotten to four point to five? Where did it? Yes, that's the point I'm making. If it hadn't gotten to four point two by January 2017, would we be at five? No. The truth is that the four point two itself was a mark of a disaster of an economy. Check the CD depreciation rates under the Mahama and Mills administrations. And do the comparative analysis by checking the rate of depreciation under this administration in 22 months. That's how you do it. Because I never imagined that the CD could be arrested to the extent that there would never be depreciation. But well, that's what the vice president said. But that is what the NDC also said. Mm -hmm. The same thing. Mm -hmm. And we all know that the truth of the matter is that they, because of the structure of our economy, mm -hmm. 
and the, role, the, the, the way it has been integrated into the international economic system. It will be difficult to actually get a situation where you will be bringing, you will be, the city will be appreciating consistently. It does off and on. But the vice president should know this. But the Mills administration and Mahama too should have known. Yeah, but he's the one who no, made the most No, I am saying that Randy, in their, in, their, in, their, in their own book, overview yeah. of better the Ghana agenda, yes. which they were two which, year, which year was this? This is 2012. Okay. April 2012. Yes. And this was to display and celebrate yeah. their achievements. Arrested, this is their own word. Mm -hmm. They were t telling us strong economy for real jobs. And they said they had arrested the depreciating city mm -hmm. and made it stable for the longest period in our history. This is 2012. Mm -hmm. Now go and check the 2014 uh, exchange rates, the financial year uh, supplementary estimates presented to parliament mm -hmm. and find out things that went on. Mm -hmm. Mr. Speaker, I'm quoting Tepe. Mr. Speaker, the city depreciated by 26.7% between January and June 2014. This is after post-2012. Mm -hmm. But remained relatively stable during the second half, depreciating by 4.5%. The cumulative depreciation for 2014 was 31.2%. Compared with 14.5% in 2013. Mm -hmm. In the Forest Bureau market, the city depreciated by 27.6%, 24.5%, mm -hmm. and 20.2% against the US dollar, the pound sterling, and the euro, respectively. This compares with the depreciation of 16.3%, 17.5%, and 19.3% against the US dollar the pound sterling, and the euro, respectively, in 2013. Mm -hmm. I have always, and you, you will bear me witness here, that the problem we had, we had politicized and mystified the CD, uh, foreign exchange rate politics. Mm -hmm. We had done that. You recall when the Bank of Ghana incident happened. And I insisted that the way forward was the depoliticization and demystification. And considering, I mean, accepting the reality that until and unless the structure of our economy undergoes some transformation, we will continue to live with this matter. Look, in the unlikely situation of an NDC administration taking over, they will be confronted with the same challenge. Mm -hmm. Go and check their campaigns. They attacked the Kufu administration for not holding the CD in check. And so 2009, when they took over, they advertised that one of the objectives was to hold the city in check, to arrest it. And that's why in the 2012, we found expression in their overview. Mm -hmm. Subsequent to 2012, what happened to the city? By the time they were exiting from office, what was the city rate? As I said, 4.2. Mm -hmm. The depreciation relative to, compared to the Kufour period, was huge and deep. So that was a sign of failure, if it was. Mm -hmm. So I'm saying, what is the business coming to tell me that the thing is 5% now? So it's a failure. You mean five cities? Five cities. Oh, yeah, sorry. Cities. I'm sorry. Don't, thank you for that. Five cities. Well, not exactly five cities, but it's close. I'm saying that you, you are no good. You are no better, rather. But if somebody promised better, if somebody said... You promised better. That's the point no, I'm making no, here. This no, was what? We, better Ghana we, agenda. We, 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 just listen to me. Yes. I'm saying that if in 2016 somebody promised better, in 2016 somebody pointed to the currency mm -hmm. and said that it was testament to bad economic management, bad leadership, it showed that they, are, they were clueless with respect to running the administration. And that give us the opportunity. We will do better. We will do better. We will stop what is happening. And that and was not the first time I was hearing somebody say no, I'm that. not saying first time. Yeah. But I'm saying that in view of all the historical backgrounds, all the things about structure of the economy, a reason that you, a non-economist, sees that it is senseless for anybody to be talking about arresting the city when the fundamentals of our economy has not changed. 
yet you have people who have professional expertise that you don't have. Yes, but the people who were also saying to Kufo and the MPP administration that they hadn't handled the city well and that they had the expertise and competence to handle it well came in and by the time they were exiting, the city was 4.2. Mm -hmm. They were also experts. They were not just people like me. Mm -hmm. okay. No, I'm nobody in terms of economics, mm -hmm. financial management. But I'm saying that the people who led the NDC campaign relative to, we are talking here specific, foreign exchange rates, right. were experts. Mm -hmm. They were bankers. Mm -hmm. They were economists. And they said they promised better. Mm -hmm. And indeed, it was better Ghana agenda. Mm -hmm. And by 2012, they were telling us that, look here, we have arrested the city. Only that they didn't add that they had kept it in cells and given the key to the IGP. <laughs> But it's virtually the same thing. Baumia brought in a certain element of humor, which you can use against him. That's his own headache. But the bottom line, substantively, both sides were saying they have arrested. The word arrested is the operative word here. Mm. The CD, meaning that depreciation of the CD, we have kept it below. Or at least... So nothing has changed? Yes, to that extent, in terms of <laughs> that. But that's the point I'm making. Maybe you're not getting my drift. The point I'm making no, is I'm that getting your drift. My only, point, my only point is that if, if, we, if, we want to use, if we want to use issues of five years earlier to justify why no, there's no big no, deal about I, what's I happening trying, today. I'm trying to show mm -hmm. the inconsistency across the political divide. Okay. The lack of principles okay. across the political divide okay. relative to economic management and okay. issues. Okay. That's what I'm trying to point out. Right. That's the key. And you know that's what I've done all the time on yeah, this platform. Yeah. So that's the point I'm making. Right. The point, the, 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 the communication that comes with selective amnesia, the pretense mm. that we didn't do that ever, give us a chance, we will cure the mischief. Then I ask you, okay, what's your track record? And your track record shows that you use the same language, you made the same agitation, you claimed you had a better solutions to the uh, problem, but when you got it, you failed. So now, what do we do? If you want to just be a, a, a bit of a moderate, you look at, okay, percentage depreciation. But I'm saying that that's not the way forward. Because in terms of percentage depreciation, oh, yours depreciated by 20%, mine by 15%, so what? The fundamentals remain the, the same. The fundamentals remain the same. Right. That's the key point I'm making. Okay. Now, I haven't finished. Okay. Unless he wants no, to, go on, go on. I want to say something. No, just yeah, hold on. I don't mind. With just a CD one. Go on. yeah. See, now we talk of the one, fact, one district, one factory. I've been listening quietly to all the arguments that, oh, they have come on in power and they are adding existing factories mm -hmm. to the package. That's another angle that has come up. Randy, if this government had not adopted the idea of adding a distressed and exi that, but ex existing factories to this program, I would have said it's a highly irresponsible government. And indeed, in doing the repackaging, they didn't hide it. They went to parliament and placed it before parliament. It's in the hands of if you want to find can, out. Can you repeat that again? I said in doing the redesigning of, of the, the in, in terms of adding distressed existing factories to the package. So, so, so in, in redefining what had been promised? Yeah, in, yes, because if you read the manifesto, yes. there was no hint that existing factories that are distressed mm -hmm will be part and parcel of the program because, of 1DY. Because we've always known that as stimulus packages. Yes, but I'm saying that yes. it's, it's obvious. It's not in the manifesto. Yes. And when you are looking at governance and governments, there's room for that redefinition or redesigning. And where best to do that by, before the House of Parliament? Mm -hmm. It's on record before the legislators to that extent, to the public. And it's well documented. 
in the Hansard, June 20th, 2018, and November 7th, 2018. So the, the June one will be the supplementary of the 2018? Yes. And then the, the 2019 will the, be what was just read last month? Yes, but I'm not talking the budget. I'm talking of the oh, minister. Okay, okay. No, I'm not talking budget. The minister of trade going to parliament. Going to parliament. Okay. To answer questions on the 1D1F. One All one right. And the minister putting out the policy documents and things relating to 1D1F one before the house. And answering questions and explaining. The issue of government deciding to identify some particular existing but distressed factories and bringing them within the context of 1D1F was articulated and presented to the house. It's not like some mischief or some hidden agenda. Mm -hmm. Because when I listen to people who are criticizing that, the idea is as if they have not even been bold enough to tell the world that look here, this is the situation we found ourselves in. And the truth is that there's a positive element, apart from the fact that those factories are being given a, life li a lifeline to rehabilitate and to regrow. You know, the 1DYF comes also with some packages, incentive packages, tax waivers and all those things. So if you are brought within that contest, those existing distressed f uh, factories could be beneficiaries of s some of those packages. Bottom line, what are you seeking to do? What is actually the 1D, 1F about? It's the question of industrialization of the country. That's what it is. That's the philosophy. So they decide that this is the way to do it. Let me give you a classic example of what the Mahama administration also did. The 200 community day schools. Mm -hmm. As we sit here, everybody still thinks that the Mahama administration announced that it was building 200 community day schools. Is that not so? Between 2013 and 2016. Mm -hmm. Go do the checks. They ended up signing contracts for one, two, four, mm -hmm. and decided to deal with that. Fortunately, if you go into an IMF document, and I say that's a public document too, it's not the same as parliament but i grant i'm charitable enough to concede that in actual fact the government the administration whatever it was i don't know i, I don't have to speak for them but up, up, it appears they abandoned the 200 project and decided to do one two four in collaboration with the World Bank and the IMF. In communication to them, this is what they said. We are doing one, two, four. In communicating with Ghanaians, they said they are doing 200. Even in the handing over notes, they indicated that they were doing 200, but have succeeded in delivering 47 in their own handing over notes. But in the notes, communication with IMF, they say, look, we are doing one to four, 23 of which was World Bank funded. Was, was the 124 not with respect to contract that they had signed? That's all they signed. They never signed any contract beyond one to four. That's the point I'm making. Yeah. By the time they were existing office, they had signed contracts for only one to four. Okay. Nothing be beyond that. And the one to four, 23 of it was World Bank funded. Mm -hmm. So it means that the Mahama administration intended to ex uh, execute 101 and not the 200. Mm -hmm. And this is documented mm -hmm. in communications between the Ghana government, the World Bank, and the IMF. Mm -hmm. I said, I saw nothing wrong with that. Mm -hmm. That's my view. Indeed, my position was that even if they executed 50 out of the 200, it was a plus for me. They ended up actually now deciding to execute 101 government of Ghana funded and 23 in addition, but World Bank funded. That's one, two, four. Mm -hmm. Here we are talking of communication, mm -hmm. integrity of communication, mm -hmm. because that's the, what I get, the hint I get when people take on the MPP relative to the 1DYF in terms of bringing on board 
existing and distressed <clears throat> factories. The, the impression I get. Yes, tell me your impression. Is, is that if you take the Ministry of Trade, for mm -hmm. example, mm -hmm. issues of stimulus packages for companies, it's always existed. Yes. And for example, one of the companies that is mentioned, um, Entrance Pharmaceuticals, mm -hmm. was one of the beneficiaries mm -hmm. of the Exim. Yeah, uh, Riley, maybe you're not getting my point. There's still, there's still. No, let me finish. You yeah, get me. Yeah, okay. So, the point is that providing stimulus packages for existing companies have a, something that has always existed. True. Now, bringing that under 1D1F and labeling them as 1D1F. No, no. That's, you, you, got my, you got me wrong. Right. That project, that line of helping distressed factories mm -hmm. still remain. There are hundreds of them out there. Mm -hmm. And they are there, and they are, some are benefiting, but they are not part of 1DYF. What the government is saying is that they have selected mm -hmm. particular, like uh, Pualugu, Aveime, uh, those they've identified some existing distressed factories mm -hmm. that they have brought within the context of 1D1F. Not all factories that are distressed. There are still factories out there that are distressed, but are not part of 1DF, 1F, but are receiving stimulus. So it's not mutually exclusive, the point I'm making. There's a conscious decision that some particular... And what makes them different? No, they've, they've done a study. Maybe there are... So I'm saying uh, those that they put under 1D1F and labeled well, them as such, uh, uh, and those uh, uh, that are not, what makes no, them different? No, I don't have the full... Uh, the, details but the point is that if you read carefully they are suggesting that there are some particular uh, factories that have a certain potential in terms of value addition that if you were to quickly help them if you are looking at your vision of the industrialization and the question of reducing the import bill and the impact it will have impact assessment if you did that selected maybe 10 15 20 of those particular factories and brought them within the umbrella, not the NDC umbrella, the umbrella. And under the elephant. And that, <laughs> that, mm -hmm. they will suffocate. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Then, at least, mm. in terms of your vision and mission, after all, it's the end goal that is important. What is the impact that you seek to make on the level of industrialization in Ghana, on value addition? So, yes. It's a government decision. It's a policy. You have decided. You cannot bring all those distressed factories under the umbrella of 1D1F because they have different levels of potential, different levels of impact that they will make on the economy. You are looking at also time. All those brought together, strategically, the government decides that I have identified these particular factories that are already in existence and they haven't hidden that they've told parliament the key point is the transparency they've told parliament that this projects we have decided to bring them within this contest and they have just 10 or 12 or 15. so the question of them still putting one uh, factory in district remains and my view i've said there's no way this administration is going to be able to execute that project in full I've said so here, yes, many times. 200 <laughs> how many uh, factories, uh, uh, districts? Please, sir, it's not going to happen. 250 or so. Yeah, it's not going to happen. It's the same with the 200 uh, schools. You know, that was district-based. It is not going to happen. It didn't happen. I knew it wasn't going to happen. And I went for 50 as something progressive. Same way, by the end of the fourth year, this administration would not have delivered 270 something factories that's not going to happen that's okay. my view right. yeah okay we'll, we'll take a break okay. and uh, when we return we'll try and uh, and wrap up on this one we'll be back shortly
swagger for sure. Look sharp, look sharp. My look can you see say maybe so out of road. Fake us press touch. Emma unyama twoda from Boko. Emma unyama nyabasa. Ne bohu bain na ne kesi entino. Ube spray a che. Ne huam sudi e seweni wa she. Fake us press touch. Look sharp. Cover yourself before any breakdown. Never allow yourself to be in a distress situation as a driver or motorist on the road. At Road Safety Management Services Limited, we want to take away your stress levels by towing your vehicle to safety as swiftly as possible. With our annual towing subscription service, you can subscribe to any vehicle of your choice, as many as you want, and enjoy a hassle-free resolution to all your breakdown and accident needs. We guarantee you a swift and smooth towing recovery service experience at any location in Ghana. From as low as 40 cities, we guarantee you a choice of towing service solution, a 24-hour service two times a year, a toll-free customer call center for swift service response and service availability nationwide. Call us now on toll-free 0800-772-772 or visit roadsafetyservices.org to sign up. Right, welcome back to the show. If you just joined us, this is Good Morning Ghana live on Metro TV. And as to with me on the show, I have Sami Jemfi and Abdul Malik Kweku Bako. Yes, Sami. Randy, I would want to, first of all, I, I've listened to the submissions of Uncle Kweku. And I totally disagree with the positions he has expressed. Mm. Because clearly, his attempt to justify the failure of this government is untenable, Randy. First of all, let's look at the 1D1F project. Mm -hmm. We are talking about a political party which made a specific promise mm -hmm. that vote for us and we will deliver factories in every district or in all districts in the country. That was the promise. Mm -hmm. And it was on the basis of that promise that the electors voted for them. At the time they were making those promises, Uncle Kwekubaku was in Ghana. Mm -hmm. We never heard Uncle Kwekubaku say that, wait a minute, these promises are utopian and lofty that you find problems with its implementation. And so be realistic in the way you go about it. We never heard it. Now, they make the promises, and on the basis of that, get power. And when we, the citizenry, are holding them to account, Uncle Kweku said, no, 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 they have redefined it. They have redefined the policy. They have repackaged the policy. So they, he okay. said they took it to parliament. They That's what they have done. No. No, they have not hidden it. That's that, what he says. That is a betrayal of trust. And the fact that they took that to parliament does mm -hmm. not justify that. Because... There is a social contract between them and the people of this country. Mm. We are waiting for the factories. Mm. You cannot tell us that post power, you have redefined your promises. You have repackaged your promises. And you see, what he is saying is at variance with what government spokespersons are saying on this matter. Because they are not saying that they have redefined or repackaged the policy. They Maybe are saying they that they are know. Ah. Maybe they don't know. Ah, so, you, so Uncle Kweku Baku knows better than... No, he's uh, quoting from officials. a document. No, so. but I'm saying... So you see the confusion of thoughts. Government says we stand by the promise. We are delivering. <laughs> Uncle Kweku Baku says, no, no, they are not delivering on that promise. In fact, the promise has been repackaged. The promise <laughs> of building one factory in every district has transmogrified into stimulus packages. That is what he's telling oh, us. No. So you think, <laughs> no. you think that... It says that's even in the minority. So don't... No, I don't think you should Randy, do that. You think that if they had told the people of this country that vote for us, we would provide stimulus packages and support... It wouldn't have been new. It, it would that have been new? It wouldn't have been You think new. that they would have gotten the mileage no, they got? No. So this is a clear betrayal of trust. And so the justification that Uncle Gwekubako is putting forth is neither here nor there. Mm. We are holding them accountable for the promises they made. Right. They cannot edit, adjust, or modify those promises. That would be a betrayal of trust. And so... It appears so, they've, done, so, they've so, done just that. 
and that is wrong. Okay. That is why we are saying that they are failing on okay. their promise. Okay. Because, you see, he says that the essence of the program is to industrialize. Yes, but not just that. The main essence was also about job creation. So you industrialize and you now, create so jobs. So when you go that, that and recommission Sunda Ghana Limited's uh, GH Pro, which has been in the citizens for the past seven years, what jobs have you created? Oh, same if, workforce. If the company, if the company, for example, expands its production yes. capacity, not, so it, it brings jobs. It brings some people. So far, have we seen an expansion? At least at at, at, at healthy life. That's mm -hmm. right. I heard Mr. Nyama say that it will help them bring on board 300 new. It yes. will help them. Yes. And no, so we are talking so about like they're getting an extra plan. No, so we are not talking about No, promises. but the man talking is talking are, based we, on we are, we are asking you to account right. for the promises okay. you are giving. You are giving more promises yeah. that oh, it will lead to this. Mm -hmm. So far, have we seen any situation where these existing factories, who, which they claim they have supported, have employed more people? No. The Kinafama <laughs> example is the bulls and nuts, is the beef. The same workforce. So they have failed to deliver on that promise. And Uncle Kwekubako should mm -hmm. not hold brief for them. If you do that, you add insult to injury, and it doesn't help. <laughs> secondly, secondly, <laughs> the issue about macroeconomic indices. Yes. He says that um, our macroeconomic environment has a positive overall picture. Currency. Currency. Overall picture. Mm. No, it doesn't. You see, what is the essence of macroeconomic indices, Randy? Mm. You stabilize macroeconomic indices, number one, to create a congenial atmosphere for the private sector mm. and the financial sector. Is that not the case? Mm -hmm. So if you have a situation, Uncle Kweku, where the financial sector and insurance sector has contracted and is now growing in the negatives, negative 13.1%, then what is the essence of the macroeconomic indices you are talking about? Number two, the net effects of macroeconomic indices is that it must have a positive bearing or a positive impact on standard of living. When the president himself has, at the time that the president himself has admitted that Ghanaians are really under excruciating hardship, and we all know that cost of living has gone up and is currently unbearable for the vast majority of the people of this country, you cannot be talking to us about macroeconomic indices. In any case, the MPP has no moral justification to talk about macroeconomic indices as proof of their performance relative to the management of the economy. Because when they were in opposition, I'm sure you remember mm -hmm. how they bastardized mm -hmm. and rubbish all the macroeconomic gains that we had shown. Mm -hmm. Wow. The first time Ghana recorded single-digit inflation and actually maintained that for more than 20 months was under our tenure. The highest growth rate ever recorded in this country was recorded under our tenure in 2014, a growth rate of 14.40%. Uh, and yet, the NPP told us that we don't eat figures. Why is now, is inflation now fried rice and chicken that we eat? So, principle here. He has always stood for principle. Let's not change the standards. They have never believed in that. In fact, Dr. Bawumia, I remember, organized a number of lectures and told us that the single digit inflation that we were speaking about <coughs> is not reflecting in the prices of commodities on the market. What has changed? That the MPP is now flaunting macroeconomic indices before our face as proof of their better management of the economy. That is neither here nor there. And Randy, what are, even, what are we even talking about relative to the exchange rates? What was the promise? The promise was to stabilize the exchange rates. They didn't pro promise lower depreciation. When Dr. Bahumia held that press conference and said that they had arrested the dollar, what was he talking about? Lower rate of depreciation? No. He was talking about stability. Same with so you. if 4.2 was a disaster per the standards of Uncle Kwekubako, then what is five uh, Ghana cities? If 4.2 was a disaster, then what about five Ghana cities? Then he says, oh, it's about the fundamentals of our economy. And so... Uh, is that not the truth? Okay. But when Dr. Bahumia was organizing those lectures, Uncle Kwakubako was in this country. Did he say that, uh, Dr. Yeah, Bahumia, on this platform, your promises are misplaced because we, you need to look at the fundamentals of our economy? In any case, Dr. Bahumia is not oblivious of what all the economic theories that Uncle Kwakubako is postulating here. He's very much aware that to, to stabilize he's the exchange rate. He's expected to know better. Yes. He is expected to know that to stabilize the exchange rate, you need to improve on our balance of trade deficits and our economic fundamentals. And that is exactly what he promised. Mm. So now you cannot say that, hey, Ghanaians do not have a right to question governments. Oh. 
for the alarming depreciation of the Ghana city. He hasn't said that. Okay, he's saying that we also fail. He said you so we, lack, we, we don't, you we, lack, we lack the, the moral authority. Yes. Okay, so we cannot criticize them because we also fail. Is that the, are we now the standard for the MPP? That is cheap equalization. Are you not? If, if, no. If, I'm sure are the, you MPP, not? the MPP will be very furious with you, anyone you, who suggests you, you, that you we You position are yourself as a better alternative. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, and they are saying that, oh, because the NDC, you see, we were in office. Mm -hmm. They said we were incompetent in managing the economy. We had destabilized the exchange rates. So they told Ghanaians to vote for them, to come to power and stabilize the exchange rates. Now you come, you are failing to stabilize the exchange rates. The dollar is now at five Ghana cities. We question you and you say, oh, the NDC also failed. So it is OK if we are failed. Is that what Uncle Kweku and the MPP are telling us? That they want to rationalize their failure? You understand? So that is neither here nor there. And Randy, even if you look at the so-called macroeconomic indices they are speaking about, it is nothing to write home about. You see, look at growth rates. What we are currently experiencing is a growth rate propelled by the oil sector. Mm -hmm. That is what you call a convoluted jobless growth rate. But that's, that's, what, <laughs> that's what accounted for the 14%. Thank you. You touted. No, when Thank we you. In 20... Non-oil, that's the point I'm saying. Non-oil, the highest non-oil growth ever recorded was also recorded under the tenure of the NBC, 8.2%. Okay. All right, okay. It, as a matter of fact, non-oil growth for 2016 was 5%. Yes. Check non-oil growth for 2017, 4.8. It's lower, yeah. It's lower. So even if you look at non-oil growth, factual. They, they have performed abysmally, in fact, mm -hmm. worse than we performed. Mm -hmm. So that, that settles the matter of macroeconomic. It is clear that they have failed, you understand. And Dr. Baumia should focus on stabilizing the city, arresting the dollar, creating a congenial atmosphere for the financial sector as head of the economic management team. Mm -hmm. And she should drop this new love for technology. That is not his <laughs> primary duty. <laughs> go all these <laughs> new technology. And, no, no, uh, finally, okay. the issue of... Uh, we the, uh, promised to build 200 community yeah. senior high schools. Yeah. Uncle Kwekubako's position on this matter is factual. Mm -hmm. Yes, we awarded contracts for about 124, mm -hmm. and at the time we were leaving, about 47 to 50 had been completed. Mm -hmm. But we are talking about a government which promised to construct 350, Uncle Kweku, not 200, 350 secondary schools. From the scratch. We, yes, within their first 22 months. This is something the president said. Now, two years down the line, he himself gave that timeline, two years, 22 months down the line. Can you tell me of a single secondary school which has been constructed or which is at you know, any stage of construction? They can't even boast of a six-unit classroom block. What have they constructed? You promised 350 schools. Today, in the city of Accra, the capital city of Ghana, school children are sitting on stones. School children are sleeping outside because of the congestion in our schools. Where are the 350? At least we did 50 out of 200. No, and we did less than 50. 47. Like it doesn't matter. 47 mm -hmm. out of. And the, the, you, you, real, you realize after we left, some of the projects were completed by Th the contractors. Th 13 were added to, to eight. this year's yeah. yeah. Exactly. So the point here is that compare our track record to their, their, their track record. Assess their promise <laughs> to build 350 objectively and tell us your verdict, whether or not they have succeeded in delivery on that promise or they have failed. The right. answer is that they have failed. And finally, yes, this issue about the Ghana Maritime Act, I appreciate the contest within which Uncle Kweku Marco makes these you know, arguments. I agree. But we still have to make the point that, Randy, we achieved all those projects because of a deliberate policy by the ex NDC regime to allow state agencies to retain a portion of their idea, which should have rather gone to central government. And that is why we're able to, 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 have, to, to build all these you know, hospitals and these projects. Right. Now, just oppose that to the capping policy, which has been introduced by this government, mm -hmm. where government is actually taking more from these state institutions. And that is strangulating and crippling these state institutions. So you realize that even with respect to that, we have a better record. Uncle Kwaku, <laughs> look at the promise they gave you know, the drivers in this country, the importers yeah. and exporters, okay. the cocoa farmers. And look at the actual deliverables today. Are you impressed? All right. Okay. I don't think you should be impressed uh, about Randy. it. All right. Yes. Uh, so uh, all we said in our press conference yesterday 
were the facts. And I know that the Ghanaian people identify mm. with the issues we raise. Mm. Thank you. All right. I, I find it quite intriguing, you know, when I hear statements to the effect that because the president admitted in a very honest way that we have challenges, call them hardships in this country, then that is actually uh, an admission of failure. Uh, I'm really wondering, and that he then could not be talking of any achievements. I can remember President Mahama. He told all of us that he had chewed the bone. We had chewed the meat to the bone. But at the same time, he was tooting achievements. That was about single spine. No, 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 no. But he was still telling us that he was delivering things, even though we had chewed the meat to the bone. That was not harsh. Ah. You don't get that knowledge. I am still window, making that point. It wasn't hardship, it was hardship, it's immaterial. We had chewed the meat to the bone, mm -hmm. meaning that there was no money. The fiscal space was so limited. But it was delivering. It mm -hmm. was still delivering. Mm -hmm. So that's the point I'm making that that point should not be brought in at all. Randy, let me tell you something 350 schools. From uh, the scratch. If this government had embarked on that project now, I would say it is a most irresponsible and insensitive government. I, that's what I would have said. You've come, somebody says he wants to build 200, do was 124. He had, the person had built, the government administration, sorry, had built 47. And you want to go and start 350 from scratch? You were saying so when you were in opposition. You've gained power. When you come, I'm telling you pragmatic governance. When you come, the first thing to do is to seek to complete the unfinished business. That's the prudence. Well, the only thing with that is that if after the program, you go back and listen to that promise, uh -huh. what President Kufado said uh -huh. was that, because I took time to listen to it yes, about 10 go, times go yesterday, uh -huh. what he said was that we're going to do 350 from the scratch in addition Randy, it was not going to be possible. You can take him... No, I'm not saying it could be possible or not, but I'm saying that he said that Listen, in appreciating that there will be existing projects and all that. But you see, we, politi we, we guys should be able to sanitize the environment and put out the alternatives. Let's take a classic example. Mm -hmm. The one-term premium mm -hmm. was a manifesto pledge by the NDC mm -hmm. for election 2008. Mm -hmm. Okay, captured in their manifesto. Right. When they came to office 2009, right. what did happen? What time did they change their view on that? Mm -hmm. They took it through to election 2012. Mm -hmm. Before they realized they couldn't do it. Mm -hmm. It didn't take away the, the entirety of their integrity. Because you deliver on other issues that people appreciate. The election where you are going, there's a basket of issues. So you might have failed in executing one-term premium. But you did other things, okay. which enabled the lottery to decide that, give them another chance. Right. So you win election 2012. Right. That's the point I'm making. Mm. That's politics. So if you isolate one three within the realm of propaganda, it, it catch, it's catchy. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, I've been in politics so for a long time. No, no, I mean, when you're attacking it. Mm -hmm. okay. Yes, you have, you have a case. And you can use it. But you see, in true terms of governance, my goodness, an irresponsible government is the one that will decide that because I said 350, I have come, my predecessor had uh, 200, he did 47, and some of them are different, various stages of completion. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to touch them. I am going to do my 350, or even in addition, as you said. You can't do that because of the fiscal space. Realism, pragmatism will dictate that complete the unfinished business. Mm -hmm. Because after all, it enhances the general well-being of the Ghanaian. And indeed, gives you even some advantage in implementing your free SHS. And is that not what is happening? Mm -hmm. The extra that has been added mm -hmm. has given them space mm -hmm. to fulfill some of the uh, pledges relative to the free education thing. That is pragmatism. Mm -hmm. That's a sensible government. Forget what the people will say, the propaganda uh, attacks. That will come. Why, why, will you, why will you refer to those attacks as propaganda? Because post, <laughs> and, not, no, no. and not refer to the promises as propaganda. No, no, propaganda no, no, promises. no. The promises could have been propaganda, but he was not in office. He's coming to office. The reality check has come, and it happens to every government. Mm. Now you have to do the right thing. Mm. The right thing is that focus on completing the unfinished business. Right. No, when you have finished that, then you can proceed to do something. Okay. Now, my brother talked of principle. Okay. And he was relating it to 
the people who bastardize the macroeconomic. Yeah, See, that's I've been sitting on this table for many, many years. We were here when economic statistics put out by the statistical service were described as 419 mm -hmm. kangaroo statistics and what voodoo statistics. Mm -hmm. By the NDC forum for setting the record straight. Mm -hmm. They even disputed the fact that the Kenyan economy had quadrupled. But when they came into office and the rebasing was done, they accepted it willingly. And said, oh, that's a true reflection of the Ghanaian economy. Randy, it is that point I am making. That when it comes to especially economics and financials, look, it's about time some of us take the lead in the depoliticization and demystification. You are talking about Obama did all those things, so people voted for him. You did all those things, people voted for Mel Samahama. Mm -hmm. Same thing. You, in the most unlikely situation of winning election 2020, you'll be confronted with this same thing. Very likely situation. Mm -hmm. Well, that's opinion matter. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you know, I never dream of NDC winning. <laughs> not that they are not capable. I know. It's a big party. I know. Yeah. I've said sometime, I said sometimes they won't win. They won. To my embarrassment. Mm -hmm. There are times I said they will lose, they lost. So that's, that's fine. To that's your joy. Yeah, okay. to my joy. <laughs> I dance <laughs> like hell. <laughs> Maybe 20, 20 when I cook for no one, I dance. <laughs> it no, I have two experiences. I won't win. Okay. I'll be sad. Uh, the man doesn't have tears okay, again. But, but, yes. but yes. Yeah, but can. please come we, we, no, no, we need no, to. Randy, just, just if we can do it in half a minute for me. I will so, do that. Yeah. You know, yes. first of all, on the issue of the 350 schools promised by President, then Opposition Leader, Akufu Um I think the essence of Anka Kofu's submission is that that was not a realistic promise. And so the president deceived the people of this country like to vote for him on realistic. the basis of and that. So you deceive. Number two, he that says that, okay, that the sensible thing for government so to do now, Uncle, the, the, you, you're saying that the sensible thing for this government to do is to complete what they came to meet. Let's grant you that. Let, let's grant the MPP that. Is that what they are doing currently? They have abandoned all the school facilities they came to meet. No, 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 no. no. Go to the Ashanti region. No, no, no. Go to the Great Akra region. It's not true. They are not. They have abandoned this project. That is not true. If I went, how come that? If you go to it's no, not those ones, the contractors were already on site. We it's have already paid them. That they finished it. Go to Diasu today in the central region. You go there. There is a completed. Community Day Senior High School fully fenced. But did you check why? But I went there. Did a video there. No, but did you check why? Did you check why that? Look, the so, so Mahama, the, point the about incident there mm -hmm. led to an about exo the intervention exodus. of the chiefs. It led to an exodus no. and security situation. Mm -hmm. So they are now coming back slowly. No. That's the why point. You see, the point that I'm making is that school, Randy, which is completed, mm -hmm. is on un utilized now. All right. Mm -hmm. No, but the point that's that's a reason. Here is that they are not even doing what you say they are doing. They are not completing the schools because they've they been in office it. for 22 months. How many of these schools have they Randy, completed? They are doing. You indicated that we had awarded contracts for 124 it. schools. Do you know that when we utilize our facility for the 124 schools, the World Bank gave us an extra facility, which was supposed to be used to enhance access to secondary education. They diverted that and said that they were going to use that for vocational education. Today, they have nothing to show for that. Mm -hmm. So show us the actuals. Which right. schools have they completed? Okay. And, 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 and okay. this, they are this doing issue right. about the economy and all that, I think that Uncle Kukubako is just rationalizing all the right. failures of the Okay, country. let's bring in our viewers I'm a, I'm a at this realist. point. No. <laughs> I, I, I did say my analysis when you were not. Your friends are not. Let, no, your friends are no, not. No, but let, I'm not let's, MPP. Let's, let's bring, back let's bring our viewers on board. Yes, but President Malika Adama says senior is justifying unjustifiable failures of the MPP. Note, senior, the NDC clearly admitted that the one term NHS will not be possible. When? When they were in power. Randy, this came last week. When? Is that it the was... same as the MPP? When? I say no. Okay. When did they admit that? Oh, that they right. went into election 2012 even with that pledge. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, that Kafa, so in America, so that, so, now my party. So that, that, that's that's right. why we have accounted that. Now, now, right. now my is party it? has elected a competent communications <laughs> officer who's really they doing a they good job. better. So Sami has forced everybody, including MPP members, to argue on evidence-based uh, issues. Uh, kudos, Sami and Mofa. Sami has done uh, well this morning. Um, Sami Jemfi's assessment to this government is, an, is as empty as a threat by an impotent man to impregnate a woman. <laughs> uh, Kufuado government has employed 19,000 mm -hmm. teaching and 14,000 on teaching staff until the GES 
uh, in March 2018. Every additional 8,000 graduate teachers have also been recruited for double track system. In December 2017, Alongame employed 14,600 trainees from the College of Education. This is George Quartin from Adenta. Um, <laughs> uh, my big brother Kaliku sent me a picture which is funny. Life is also always not fair. I hear when you guys go past 60, you start uh, uh, thinking some way. Uh, <laughs> okay. My brother. Uh, it should be 63. Wow. Yes. Hey, no, it's no joke. <laughs> Sami Jeffy is on fire, confident and uh, sector by sector appraiser. That might provoke Mr. Baku to order for some voluminous files to be delivered by drones. <laughs> Interesting submissions and a definite lifting of the ball of accountability to the electorate. Uh, this is from Seth, my brother. Okay. Um, Kakra uh, from uh, uh, Okere says kudos to Sami. You know Kakra? Yes. Nana Kakra. Okay. All right. Ben Mensah says the economic fundamentals from both political parties are viciously weak. We have continuously run a deficit budget for many years. We read annual national budgets year after year, and I don't see us cutting expenditures and taking a bold step to increase revenue. We need to be seriously bold to fix the macroeconomic factors for a sustainable growth of the economy. The NDC government convened an economic forum at Royal Senchi in 2014, issued a Senchi consensus with homegrown economic policies, but we abandoned it. We need fiscal discipline in our budget and also monitor external economic activities that has negative effect on our economy. The current debate is to improve and increase the tax net. Let us be patriotically bold to educate the citizenry of the importance of doing their civic duty to acquire the tin. Uh, why we need the tin? It says, one, it helps to identify taxpayers. Two, it helps to identify people collecting social services. Three, helps government to prepare annual budget statements. Four, helps taxpayers to access social services. Five, it helps governments to identify specific and targeted spending. For example, budget allocation for free SHS and LIP beneficiaries. Six, it helps innovations in expanding the tax net and to increase revenue collection. Uh, seven, it helps the private sector in identifying persons they do business with. Example, banks will use the PIN number, uh, the TIN number to help their services and share information. Uh, eight, it stops people from gaming the system. We need to, we need not forget the big elephant in the room is corruption, which in my view, we are not seriously tackling. So that's Ben Mensah. Yes. Grown thing yeah. was largely, uh, you know, more or less modified because mm. of the IMF program we entered in okay. subsequently. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Though uh, it was a good project. Mandy you know, Williams says Sami Jemfi is getting ahead of himself. He should learn to communicate well. You're not on some uh, radio station to be asking <laughs> oh. whether inflation is now fried rice and chicken that we eat. <laughs> um, and and Mandy, Mandy, your language is also terrible. Uh, I'm exactly. not sure you wanted me to read all the things that you have written here. Okay. And so, in as much as you want Sami to come oh, right, that's better, okay. you should also uh, come That's a typical better. NPP person uh, for no, you. That's unfair. Just like a typical NPP You don't know where she is from. No, so she's from Yeah, you, like you might not know her point. Yes, I can. I we can, don't know, I can, so, I can. so just you know. leave it like that. Or you know the person. Um, <laughs> but she, Gideon Hammond case, uh, like uh, says, I understand <laughs> the state in which Malik is in. It's difficult to defend such a disappointment. We can pardon him today as we speak. Upon all the boring by this MPP government, our capital expenditure to GDP ratio as a country is just 1.7%. In 2018, and this is a decline from 4.5% in 2016. What does this government have to show? Not even a hand coop. Randy, let them know yeah. I don't represent the ruling party here. Yes. And I speak my mind. Yes. Something I've done all you represent now. yourself. Well, you so far yes, I, I, okay. I had you the know, same problem when the them. NDC was in office. Yes. Yes. Specific projects yes. like the infrastructure things, and the right. school thing. When I spoke in favour, I was attacked. No, but your objectively, uh, on some of these cases, now, you, you suffer a collateral damage. Your, your comrade, you Mutala. Yeah. Mutala. Uh -huh. Okay. He says, find out from my senior comrade what it means by adding to the 1D1F program. As a matter of fact, they are not contributing anything to any of the factories they claim they are launching as 1D1F. Exactly. Two, it is also not true that any of the factories really launch are anyway in distress. Again, you should go back and read all the official communication from government on the relaunch of those factories. In those statements, they've consistently stated the opposite of what Kweku is desperately trying to say. 